18-year-old Scott is boozing his life away in one long party. I get up like two in the afternoon every day and then drink or smoke, basically. <laughs> Drug, sex and alcohol, that's about it. <laughs> the only thing I tend to want to achieve in the night is to not remember it the next day. Don't like the way he drinking, taking drugs and smoking. I just like him to be mature a bit about what he's doing. Scott's parents divorced when he was five, but his mother scrimped and saved to send them to a top private school. My mum spent so much money on my education. But I discovered alcohol and drugs and things that I, I thought they're more important. Scott refuses to get a job and hasn't got any money, but it's never a problem. If my mum hasn't got money, I'll go to my dad. If he hasn't got money, I'll go to my nan. If she hasn't got money, I've got my great nan, my granddad. There's always someone I can borrow money off. <laughs> I'm a very good punt. Even after years of abuse, Scott's mum is still determined to save Scott from himself. I'm not going to give up on him. I'm not giving up. I just want 20 quid. I don't want all of that. No, not... Thank you. I wouldn't say I, I had a relationship as such with my mum. It's more she's someone I ever borrow money off or argue with. Only there to make sure you're all right. Well, I don't need you to make sure I'm all right, do I? I'm your mother. I don't care. I love you. I don't care. Seventeen-year-old Billy thinks she's living the dream. I actually think sometimes that I was brought on this earth to party. I've had enough. <laughs> OK, so what does that mean? Swivel on out? <laughs> Billy, I made it. Oh, enough is enough. <laughs> well, you go on my Facebook, literally most of my pictures are of me at my face partying. Turn the music down. Loud and I've had enough. The main casualty of Billy's party lifestyle is her education. She scraped 13 GCSE passes, but is failing her A-levels and has been suspended from school three times. Billy, why did you not do your coursework? Time to to be and you got a D. I think that report is a load of crap and they don't know what they're talking about. She wastes his face talking to you, because that's exactly your attitude, it's just weeks. She doesn't want to do her homework or anything, she just says it's rubbish. She'd rather think about going to a rave or... Where's she going to get the next bottle of wine from? And despite holding down two jobs, <laughs> Billy's mum never gets any help around the house. It's not washing up. I mean, I'm not going to get me washing up. I'm not washing up. Billy has never done any chores. She doesn't know how to clean the bath. She doesn't know how to clean the bathroom. She doesn't know how to tidy up. She doesn't know how to bring the dishes downstairs. I'm like... not washing up today. No, I'm not. My mum's right in this house is to do everything. She is in this house to do the cleaning, to make the dinner. That is her role. That's not going to change. Billy's parents split up when she was two years old. Billy was raised by her mum and rarely speaks with her father. There's things with my dad that makes me feel like, why should I bother speaking to him? Dad should make effort, but he doesn't make an effort whatsoever. Yeah, Billy's dad is... Uh, Billy's got a lot of her dad's ways. Selfish. <laughs> The moment I could kill her and she could kill me. And I don't really know what I've done wrong. To try and get their lives back on track, both teens have agreed to spend a week living with new parents on the other side of the world. Love you, Mum. Is she got everything? Yeah. Everything. Money? Yep. Passport? Yes. <laughs> All right. OK. Bye. Love you. Bye. I would like him to uh, go up and have responsibility. If he changes, then maybe we'd be able to talk like a mother and son. Right, listen to me. Be a good girl. Try your best to try and do what they say to do. Try not to be defiant. And don't be rude. I love ya. Bye, babe. I want her to learn to appreciate what she's got at home and appreciate how easy she's got it, rather than thinking she's so hard done by all the time. 
Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name's Billy. I'm Scott. Hello, Scott. Where are you from? Croydon. South End. <laughs> I really want a sunbite. <laughs> the British teenagers are being sent here, 5,000 miles away to Mombasa on the Kenyan coast. They will be staying with a hard-working Christian family with a traditional African approach to parenting. You must respect the elders. The father must be given that respect. The mother must be given that respect. Total, there's no way out. Let us pray. I can be very, very strict if I have to, especially when uh, disobeyed. When there's disobedient, then I have to put my foot down. Dad Dixon manages a thousand employees at the city's environmental health department. His wife, Faith, stays at home to look after the children. My dad is really strict. Ooh, if, you, if you break the rules, it can be very scary. When we were young, he used to cane us. I haven't ever answered my parents back. I haven't talked to them rudely and because I've been taught not to, and it's, I just can't do it. For the education is the top priority. They spend 90% of their income on sending their kids to Mombasa's most expensive school. We have made a lot of sacrifice because uh, we would have had maybe our own private house by now instead of paying rent or staying in such a small place. But we decided to put everything aside for these children to have the right education. After a nine hour flight, the British teenagers arrive in Kenya. I'll show you what I've been through. <laughs> The coastal port of Mombasa, with a population of 700,000, is Kenya's second largest city. These guys are actually working hard, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know how they can, like, perch all these heavy things in this heat. Oh, it's a shock. Yeah. One in four people survive on less than 60 pence a day, and many live in sprawling urban slums. The place looks dangerous. I haven't seen any white people yet. I just thought I'm shit myself. I'm so scared. Just about where we're staying. Shit. We are not staying here. Hi, I'm Scott. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Same, same here. My name is Rebezo. OK, fine, Mrs. <laughs> so feel at home. Thank you. And uh, let's see how things are going to be. <laughs> but we are happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. For the next eight days, Billy and Scott will live by the same rules as children. Hi. I'm Valerie. My name's Billy. It's nice to meet you. And like any other visitor, they will be expected to respect their values. I think the first thing we have to do as Christians is to pray, to thank God that you are here safely. Okay. That's what we do, yeah. So we are going to have a short prayer. Okay. okay. We thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us our guests today. We hope that we are going to be with them and they are going to be very nice to us. And we are hoping that everything is going to be fine and eventually we shall remain friends forever. Amen. Amen. So then we'll just show you to your rooms. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, the boys' room. Okay. That's the bed. John and you are going to share. Okay. Yes. The ladies' room. Choose any bed. Anyone that you like, <laughs> you'll share with Valerie. Okay. Just like home, okay? Okay. All right. All right. So this is our kitchen. It's small, but uh, this is how we, we manage. So this is the washroom. Fewer than half of all Kenyans have access to clean running water in their homes. So by Kenyan standards, three-bed apartment is luxurious. It's a total slum, isn't it? I don't know why people would want to live here. I don't really like their bathroom. And they've got rations like water. I call my family poor, and then you come here. I couldn't live so comfortably great. here, I don't think, at all. No, I couldn't either. No way. Not by any standards. No way. The teens aren't the only ones taken aback. The kids are a bit shocking, let me say. The first sight, especially of uh, Scott, is uh, quite surprising to us because we don't expect it from a teenager in our country. The tattoos are just too many and uh, the piercings also not allowed. Really, it's the whole uh, body, somebody's putting the tattoo in that. I don't know what he's thinking of. Mm. 
I'm shocked. The, if they are removable, we'll remove them. That's my, my feelings. Billy and Scott, please come in. Before they are fully welcomed into the household, Faith and Dixon want to make sure the teens know exactly what's expected of them. Have a seat. Feel comfortable. OK, then, we go to the family rules. These are family rules, and they must be obeyed. And uh, without obeying, then definitely there are consequences which may not be very nice. So we wouldn't want to go to reach to that extent. OK. While you are living with us, disobedience will not be tolerated. We do not allow smoking anywhere. Um, I'm, will I'm not... not sure if I can go okay. that length without smoking, to be honest. We will see to that. We will not tolerate the drinking of alcohol. Alcohol is bad for your body and makes you behave like an imbecile. I don't really function without alcohol. It's going to be hard not to have a drink the whole time at um, some point. OK, let's continue. I really need to smoke and drink right now, to be honest. <laughs> OK. We'll see to that. OK, the next one. We do not allow piercings or tattoos. Um, this is permanent or temporary? It's permanent. And uh, the hairstyle. What about my hair? It doesn't go well here with African culture. First, they, they get an impression that you are rogue. Secondly, they also believe that the people who do piercing here in, in Mombasa, as it is now, are homosexuals. Would you like that? <laughs> this is why we are telling you it's very important to listen to us. If you break any of these rules, you will be punished by being sent to grandma's, where you will have to do hard labor. Because even when Nijon and Valerie make mistakes, they have to go to grandma's. You will change. If we need, like, a little time out, can we go outside for a bit? Outside here, down here? Yeah. OK, but mark you, all the other houses are watching. Eh? So let me hope that you're not asking that, because you want to be you cheeky a, outside you have, there. You have a, you have a smoke. Because be this is one community. We live like a community here. Yeah. And uh, we respect each other, and uh, there are some expectations, you know, from each family. One thing I miss, and I need to stress, yeah. uh, these are not coming out. Uh, like, the, 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 the 100, like, they are not coming out at all. Scott, you young man, listen to what we tell you. It's for your own benefit, it's not for my benefit. I'm a very good man, and I can change to be the worst man ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My life already. Despite Dixon's warning, Billy and Scott react to the rules in the only way they know how. I ain't going a whole week without drinking. I go back in pissed. Stink of smoke. <laughs> he seems scary. Like. I can't wait till he starts raising his voice. That'll be a funny argument. Got to totally hide my arm, my ears. I've got to cut my hair. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Billy is OK. She may be hiding a few things, which we are yet to discover. But uh, she's not that badly off. She's a nice girl. But uh, Scott, Scott is an issue. Quite shocking. And uh, because in our culture, I would not expect him to answer back, to tell me that he's going to do this. He must smoke. He must drink. So, and you know, in African culture, sometimes people would resort to even uh, caning, thoroughly. <laughs> We agreed. Yeah, one second. Protective of his hard man image, Scott has decided to remove his earrings while in public. I'm mad. If I don't take these out, I'll get followed around by another gang. <laughs> to be honest, this looks worse than having them in. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like prison. But his piercings aren't the only issue. The haircut right now is more of a rowdy person, so it's not allowed, really. You know, and we would become a spectacle for everyone. So we, we don't want that. You probably have to cover the hair with a, a hat. I'm not wearing a hat, to be honest. Um, I'd rather not go than to wear a hat. It's um, very necessary. I'm not arguing with that, I'm just not wearing a hat. You know, the more we argue, the more we are wasting time. There's only one solution that's going to keep both parties happy. The 
haircut is not bad for England, but for Africa here, Kenya, it's pretty strange. We don't want them to mistake you for a bad person. Yeah, this is very nice. I'm so proud of you, Slot. Yeah, I'm so proud of you, really. Very nice. It's great. No, happy. Thank you. It's what? Just gone five o'clock and my outfit's gone. No, this is a joke. Kenya has one of the highest literacy rates in Africa, but education is still considered a privilege. I hope it's like a half decent. Oh, I reckon it's gonna be short. Scott had an exclusive private education. He's confident he can handle anything Kenyan school has to throw at him. I'm kind of assuming I'll be the smartest kid there. I mean, fairly certain I was in the top sort of like 1% of the, the world, like nation or whatever, I don't know. Like, I think I'm really, really smart. Education is at the heart of priorities, and Faith wants to make sure the teens know it. Education is very, very important in your lives and, in, and for your future, so please take it seriously. And uh, be cooperative because you are representing our family. So I don't expect uh, Billy to start uh, arguing with teachers, you know. And uh, Scott as well. Please behave at your best. The teens are heading for Coral High, 10 miles north of Mombasa. The school motto is Think Success, and head teacher Rosa Kemwa insists her 120 pupils achieve it. Parents choose to bring their children here because we are very, very particular about discipline. Because we believe without discipline, there's nothing you can do in life. Coral High charges just £240 a year, but that's as much as an average Kenyan's annual income. So many parents struggle to afford the fees. In this district, most of the children are disadvantaged. They come from families that live below the poverty line. Hello, come right in, Mom. How are you? Fine, how are you? Welcome to Coral Union High School. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. We hope you're going to do everything as per the school rules of this institution. Those are our 30 commandments or rules. Are you, are you pissed about it? Is it OK with you? Come oh, why? Good. So tomorrow, when you come in, I would expect it to be up to here. Oh, I'm, I'm not shaving my beard off. Seriously, I'm not getting rid of that. That's a school rule, my dear. No, I understand, but I, I'm, I'm not... OK, we'll talk it. about it later. With the lessons <laughs> about to begin, Principal Akemwa wants the new pupils in uniform and in class. But the school doesn't have a pair of trousers large enough for Scott. 36 inches and the legs 33. 36? Yeah. yeah, we have not had that size yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We, for now, for today, we, we will allow him to be like that. Is he not wearing anything oh, like that? No, it's because he, ha he hasn't got his size. He hasn't got his size. It's for me. Today. Tomorrow he has to wear it. Well, can I wear mine tomorrow then? So I don't see it fair as Scott being allowed to wear his shorts today and I've got to wear uniform. I can wear it tomorrow, but if Scott's not wearing his today, why should I wear mine? You didn't come here because of Scott, my dear. I can't, no, I'm yeah. not having to wear it. Wow. See what is happening here? I'm not wearing uniform. Should I give Scott you half an hour to think? Because no, I'm not, I, I, if I have to take action, it's going to be very bad. You are embarrassing me here. I'm not embarrassing you. You are. I'm you not, are. And you, you are disrespecting you're my family. You're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. You're not seeing where I'm coming from. You don't want to reason. That's why. I am listening, but you're not seeing where I'm coming from. I think it's out of order. No, I'll wear Scott. I'll wear uniform as soon as Scott wears his uniform. We both come here for the same reason. Look here. You are responsible for your own life. I think oh, this is okay. taking the piss at the moment, to be honest. Fine, then we go back home and we see what will be done at home because no, this is not right. No, you need to understand where I'm I coming know, from. No, I'm not going to understand. I refuse because this is not your school. Yeah. This is just school rule. Oh, Uniform has to be worn. Just give me the trousers. You'll wear the trousers now? Yeah, just give me the trousers. Okay. Let's go to the office then. No, I'll wait here. Can you get them? I've, I've got I can't get them for you, my dear. You are younger than me. Go get your trousers. Tell the principal that you are ready to wear your trousers now. 
in our society here, I wouldn't expect that. Even if my daughter wanted to complain about something, she would not do it in front of the principal. It was not nice. But at least I'm happy that she finally accepted, which means like she actually backed down and she decided to understand. We want to hear stories and experiences from Britain. So we need to hear from the two friends of us. So Scott, you are welcome. Before starting lessons, the teens must introduce themselves to their fellow students. Hi everyone, I'm Scott. Uh, I'm 18 from England in the UK. Um, yeah, I went to a very good school in Britain, but um, I had a really low attendance. Like, I came in like two or three times a week. Uh, I, I failed all my grades. I drink a lot and I do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, basically, I just like to party and I don't like to work. <laughs> What's the worst thing you've ever done? I don't know. The worst things I've done, like, steal money from my family, um, do drugs and then smash cars up on the way home. And wow. I've been to hospital with, for drinking too much. <laughs> things like that. I get into a lot of fights at home. Hello, my name's Gilly. I'm from England as well. At home, I usually just sit on my computer, go out drinking. Um, <laughs> I do, I've done a lot of drugs, from ecstasy to cocaine, everything. <laughs> I've been in a lot of trouble with the police for fights, um, drinking. I hit a policeman before, and then I got like arrested for it. <laughs> and I went home, and my mum went mad. While Scott and Billy are feeling pleased with themselves, the bragging about their lifestyles has shocked their Kenyan classmates. What I heard about them was shocking because the parents, they feel hurt when they see their children stealing their money, taking drugs, abusing them. And them taking drugs, like cocaine, right? It's just like, wow, are you serious? The life in England it is not good. If you have been given a lot of money, you go and uh, drink and do whatever you want uh, and you'll forget about education. Kenyan teenagers spend four years studying for a certificate of secondary education. But it's all too easy if, like Scott, you think you're one of the world's cleverest people. Child work. It's easy though, so I can just get on with it and carry, carry on. So I shouldn't really complain. <laughs> so, mental arithmetic, let me start with uh, Mr. Scott. Eh? If 10 men can take five days to finish a job, how long will 15 men take? Two and a half days. No, no, no. Mm. The simple answer Scott's looking for is three and a third. Ten men can take five days. How long will 15 men take to finish the same job? I can't put it into a calculation in my head. <laughs> so, um, OK, thank you, thank you, thank you, Scott. Literally, like, ten seconds after it went away, I remembered how to do things, but it weren't really important, so... I'm not too bothered. It's like primary school stuff. There's no point. It's boring. After lunch, Scott is called into the head teacher's office to discuss his non-regulation facial hair. So you're not going to do anything about your beard? I'm just not getting rid of it. Have you seen any boy in class with beards? No, not like mine. I don't want to be the same as everyone else. Even if I give you a big razor here, you cannot do it? I'm not changing my mind. You don't want to change your mind? No. You are made up? Yep. Then I'm not going to have you in class? OK, just get out. <clears throat> Never in the history of this school have I had a student who says, I cannot shave my beard. That kind of a child is a kind of a spoiled child completely. Because sometimes like this, it becomes a bad inference and show to the other students. So the only alternative I'm left with is to have him out of the school compound completely. Mrs. has been called to come and collect Scott. 
Hello. What's happening? Um, I've been kicked out. Why? Because I won't shave. It's good to sometimes make compromises. I, I don't think That's I should do anymore. For two anymore. days, Scott. Consider that. It is also embarrassing me, actually. It's embarrassing our family, really, you know? I have made effort to come here. I yeah. have cut my hair and I have yes. taken my piercings out. Yeah. And I've, like... This is very embarrassing for me. I don't even know but how to it's face embarrassing. The it's embarrassing Our family, for me. Mr. Mugaza, is making calls all the way. He's supposed to be in a meeting right now, but he keeps calling me asking, what is happening? Why has he done that? You know? It's, it's, a, it's a letdown completely. Mm -hmm. I'm still not going to change my mind. After school, the teens were expecting to go to the beach, but Faith and Dixon want to talk to them about their behaviour in school. As soon as we're going to the beach, can I go and have a cigarette quick? Because I haven't had one in, like, ages, and I really need to have one. Like, really need to have one. And I'll be, like, two minutes, so... I, really I think to... yesterday you had us say it very clearly that it's not allowed here. Well, I need to have a cigarette. No, no. Nobody is going to the beach now. She's going to cancel the beach trip now because of that. Oh, she can suck my big toe then off some baby on this bit of mud. The beach trip will be cancelled. <laughs> Cancel the beach trip if you don't really bother me. I will come out here with my towel and I will lay down naked. <laughs> Actually, just in case it does get to the stage where they do want to take these. I'm taking some still got more stuff. Smoking is not just a breach of the trust. Billy is only 17, so in Kenya, she's breaking the law. Now, Billy, what has happened? <laughs> I had to have a cigarette, and no one's stopping me from having a cigarette. You're taking this whole thing like a joke, because yesterday we How? discussed with you. Yesterday you said you had no cigarettes. You said you had no cigarettes. You were cheating us. Yeah, all right. But all right, I might have told a little white lie, but, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not going to give you my cigarettes. I'm sorry, but uh, if you're a minor in our country, you don't say what is to be done in the house. There are rules that need to be followed. Do you not think cancelling the whole trip's a bit over the top? Yesterday you cheated me that you don't have cigarettes and you have the cigarettes now. You can't just cancel the trip because yeah, it's I have cancelled that trip and I'm giving you punishment and if you're not taking it, I know what to do later. Next. I think that should be it first. Yes. I'm going to have a more worse punishment than that. They even put you in cells. I don't care about it. No, I'm not going in any yeah. cells, I'm afraid. No, you will. No, I won't. I think that's ridiculous, to be yet. honest. That's a The law does allow 18-year-old Scott to smoke, but it's normal for Kenyan parents to call the police during family disputes. I ain't having that. Getting friends put in cells. That's ridiculous. They're not going to put you in a cell. Well, he it's seems to think place, he's some sort he? of big man. He won't put me in a cell. Put me in a cell. Knock him out. I'm sure I'll live a little bit and you see how If he tries to put me in a cell, I'm packing my bags and leaving. I was really shocked because I thought Billy was okay. She looked like she was adapting. But then she came up with the cigarettes and yeah. So now it's a whole different story. They need to be taught that this in this world you cannot be selfish because you have to think about what you do will affect other people. So they have uh, done something and they're going to pay for it. Badly. Do you have anything you want to tell us now? Are you sorry for our smoking? I'm and not sorry disobeying? for it. I'm not sorry disobeying for it. Our rules? I'm, I'm not apologising because I don't think I've done anything wrong, to be honest. Okay. You, you did not smoke? I've, no, I've I did, but... Smoke. Hmm. So you don't care about our rules? No, I care, That's but... the conclusion we're going to make. So if rules... you say that you will, you will still do what we're asking you not to do while you're here. So now, because of that, we definitely have to do something about that. So we can't go to the beach because of a cigarette? Yes. Yeah, oh my Instead, God. we are going elsewhere. Telling people you're Elsewhere stupid. like where? Yeah, telling we're going to visit grandmom now. Scott is going to remain here while we, I go with you. Just me? Yeah. I, I don't want to go. I need to speak to you privately. I don't want to go to grandma's no. on my own. I'm not going no. on my own. Yeah. No, I'm not going there on my own. I'm not going. I'm no. going with you. I'm not going somewhere I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm not. You see, again, you're using abusive language. You see? <laughs> this is a very big problem here. A big one. Children are no strangers to being punished at grandma's. 
Valerie has some wise words of experience for Billy. I don't even think I've seen them like this. I, I, in how many years? I, I don't know. I haven't seen them like this before. You've done something really wrong. needed to have a flag. Yeah, I know, like, but can't you control your urge in a way? If you're stressed, take sweets, play something, run around, you know, like have lollipops, have be hyper, scream. I can't but just change. I can't just. Well, are you are you willing to do it? I'm willing to do it. Yeah. And I will go. But if it gets too much, then what will you do? I'll walk off and I won't go. I don't know to wherever there is to walk off to. There is nowhere to walk off to. Okay, there's a road, okay, but you can't walk off there. It's dangerous, you don't understand. This is Kenya. Grandma's village is 30 miles from Mombasa. Without any modern amenities, she's raised nine children here on her own. Discipline is good because children obey their parents, respect the people, all the people. Drinking and smoking, you don't allow them. Okay. Here we are in uh, Mazeras, Plan Marshless. In Kenya, the word of elders is law. Sit down. So what grandma says goes. She decides that Billy's punishment is to perform physical labor and stay in the village overnight. Tomorrow morning? Yes. yes I really down. want to stay. I know I you don't want to stay. stay. You have come here not because we want it. Oh, so. I'm, I'm not staying. I'm just getting up there. I just got here and they're telling me I'm staying here. No, I'm not. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying. Uh, there is nothing. I haven't got anything against you. It's not. I've just got here. I haven't got any of my stuff. I don't feel comfortable yeah, just staying here. We are not bad people here. No, I know. I'm not, I'm not saying you're bad. I am not saying that. But I'm telling you, don't be worried. At home, Billy always gets her own way. But despite the tears, Faith is determined not to back down. See, for me, it is wrong for me to go back and start asking, oh, you're so, we are sorry, why are you crying, you know, because in our culture, when you are instilling something, you have to make sure it is instilled. You don't go back again on your what. After talking to Grandma, Billy agrees to stay in Pound Maze, the staple food of the village. Grandma was born in 1920 and still pounds maize every day. Her humble approach to life has touched Billy. Can't you see me to face yourself this side? She's so nice. Makes me upset. Like, she's really nice and she talks about her life and how she's done it all on her own and stuff. It's hard work, like you think. Like they have to do that, like what, every day? Not a lot really makes me cry, but when you see things like this, it makes you realise what we've got. After four hours solid effort, Billy has earned Faith's forgiveness. Let me tell you that I'm very proud of you. I am, because you, you took that initiative, you came and uh, pounded the maze, which is a very hard task for you. You've never done it in your life. So I do understand why you, you can feel quite upset. It's tiring also. But just take it as part of life, growing up. It's an, it's an experience. Yeah. Yes. So don't think that these people don't like me or they hate me. No, we like you. Just like Valerie, the way I love my daughter is the way I love you now. Yeah. Back in the city, and Scott is about to find out what his punishment will involve. 
Lazy people. Mr. Scott, wake up. Today you'll follow me to work. As part of his job, Dixon manages the city's rubbish collection department. He's arranged for Scott to spend the day on the bins with his operations manager, Mr. Sadiq. I just wanted to brief uh, Scott that this is Mr. Sadiq. So you and I today are going to be rubbish men. Uh, please. Yes. Since dropping out of college, work shy Scott has never held down a job. Dixon thinks it's about time he learned the value of hard work. He's never done anything before. Just sitting idle, drinking, boozing. He's lazy. That's the only thing you put it. He's lazy. Mr. Sadiq wants Scott to join a team of eight men clearing up a busy market square. I'm not touching that. You, you, you'll get used to it. I don't, I'm not getting used to anything. I'm not going near that, I promise you. It stinks. Ah. Can't breathe. <laughs> the whole streets is full of rubbish. I'm not going near any of this. It's disgusting. It's minging. I thought South End was a shithole, but South End's like Hilton compared to this place. Almost half of all Kenyans are out of work. And with no welfare state, a job can be the difference between life and death. He doesn't want to work, even if it means uh, to earn a living. So we must actually try to take him away from that attitude. He must have an attitude change. Appalled by Scott's behavior, Mr. Sadiq marches him back to the pound to explain himself to Dixon. The smell just made me really ill. I couldn't touch the rubbish. It just made me feel sick, to be honest. <laughs> Unhygienic. The way it looks, you just want to have an easy life. You sleep, you get money. How do you get money like that? Stealing? No, I, I borrow from my family. That's nonsense, really. Look at me, I'm coming to work. I'm not here to wait for my mama to give me money to buy my things. This is very simple. Yeah, Scott, decide for yourself, decide for your life. This is it. What kind of boy is this? He's useless. I've never been to Britain, but I'm surprised, I'm shocked. If this is how they are, I'm sorry for Britain. Dixon could have given Scott's shift to one of the locals who come to the pound every day desperate for work. He wants Scott to realize what it would have meant to one of them. The situation by now is very bad, you know, because we all, uh, people who don't have job, and we have nowhere to look after our family. It's, in fact, we have to come here only because there is no any other job outside this place. But now we have nothing to do. So, Scott, you can understand that he wants the job so that he could feed the family, he could look after the family. And here you are, refusing the job. Is that fair? Scott, is that fair, really? No, it's not fair. I feel horrible. I've taken his job and now he's got no money to feed his family or whatever. So if they don't eat tonight, it's my fault. It makes you feel like absolute shit. Punishment's over, and the school have agreed to accept the teens back, despite Scott's facial hair. I'd like you to construct a sentence using will and have. I will have my dinner later. Uh, I want a sentence that looks this way. For Billy, it's a chance to hear about the lives of her classmates. My dad is he's a drunker, but the way I see him behaving with my mom, I totally don't like it. Yeah. Because he gets drunk, beats up my mom. Then I say, if getting married is like this, better living single. And education helps you a lot. 
Like here in Kenya, without education, there is nowhere you can go. Nowhere at all. Life there at home with your mother, how is it? Me and my mom argue a lot. About money and getting drunk and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we can get on sometimes, but there's not a man in the house. There's no dad, so if there was a man there, maybe it'd be a bit more, yeah, a bit more so, strict. They really appreciate school and schoolwork and sort of getting on with things out here. A lot of my mates just have like ambitions to become a footballer's wife. <laughs> it's not the same out here. They really like know what they want to be, sort of thing. And I don't know, they want to do it for good sort of reasons. How old is she? I want to improve the modern technology of the aeroplanes. I want to be the first person to make the fastest aeroplane ever seen in the world. I will get a scholarship in a good university. In English, pupils have been asked to read out speeches they've written about their ambitions in life. Yes, Scott, tell us what you want to be after 10 years. I don't really want to read it, if that's OK. Go on, Scott. After all his showing off on the first day, Scott's confidence appears to have deserted him. Nobody will be... No, 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 no. Oh. I don't want my speech read out. Because it's embarrassing. No, read. We are waiting for you. You have to wait all day. <laughs> he shakes as if he's going to faint, like something like that. Bailey is like the the boy, and Scott is like the girl. He was shaking. He was sweating. He could only look down. Scott's cocky front is crumbling as he struggles to be honest about his real feelings. I answered the question. I, I don't want to read the speech out. <laughs> After school, Mr. decides to give Scott a second chance to prove himself at work. His own upbringing was in stark contrast to the average British teenager. You know, we had a really hard life. Really hard life. Uh, we are in a family of about nine. And uh, uh, my father died when we were very young. At your age, I was not doing everything for myself. Even getting some casual labor, I really worked hard for, because my mother could not afford it. We are proud of that. We are proud of that. And I say that because I know you can do it. I respect him quite a lot, to be honest. He has done really well. Like, he's worked solidly for like his whole life, even when he was young. So, yeah, he deserves full respect, to be honest. I just want to prove that I can actually work without them just looking at me as if I'm some sort of failure. Mr Sadiq put Scott to work clearing piles of rubbish off the streets. Working for about ten minutes. Knackered. I haven't done a full day's work for about a year. <laughs> I haven't done half a day's work for about a year, so there's dust everywhere. Oh, Mr. Oh, Scott is doing tremendous now. Today he has proved that he can perform. And he's doing it skillfully. Congratulations for that change of heart. Yeah? Always have a change of heart. Always think that you can do good, you can do perfect. Yeah? And that one will give you a drive to do any job on earth here. After seeing the people here now, and working, and I, I, I feel like I, I really should get a job and work and, and earn my own living instead of sponging off people. Because, um, yeah, I think I'll get more of an achievement out of that, the fact that I can earn my own money rather than having to borrow and take from people. Uh, one of you will pray today. Who is praying? I don't know really how to start it. I'll, I'll just try. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you for blessing us with this food today. Amen. 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 <laughs> this is a try. Okay. How 
It's Scott and Billy's last day at Coral High, and Principal Okamwa has entered them into the school poetry competition. My family are very special to me. I love and care for my family. One day I hope to have my own family and be happy. Families should have love, happiness and respect. A family should trust one another and care for one another. Scott never read a poem out in public before, but with his confidence boosted, he has an opportunity to show he's matured. I find it difficult to talk about emotions in front of people, especially when like, you're trying to portray like an arrogant sort of blokey image and then you're reading out like emotional poems or just, just anything about yourself. I find it difficult. Last but not least is Scott. It's not very good, by the way. Um, what my family means to me. I don't see much of my family, but they still mean the world to me. Sometimes I think I drive them crazy because I take their money because I'm lazy. I spend it on alcohol that makes me sick and they all think that I'm a dick. <laughs> Then we argue for a while, but in the end, we always smile. And there's nothing for me that they wouldn't do, and I feel the same way about them too. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Oh, it was great. I think the two students did perfectly well. But the best of the best was Scots, because there was all that we needed in a poem. I think people have the wrong idea about me. I don't think I got a lot of sympathy as a kid or attention, so I crave it in a different way. Like, I make myself all arrogant and, and cocky and confident and draw the attention to me. I get stupid haircuts and piercings, and I like to be the person that the attention is drawn on. Like I like to think I'm something special, but maybe I'm not. I think if I want to be something special, I've got to try a lot harder. Hello. I'm right, thank you. You all right? Back home. Billy and Scott are eager to show off their achievements to the You've seen what you've done. This is very good, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're so is. proud of you. We are really very I happy. Very I hope you guys are proud of yourselves too for achieving <laughs> such um, such, yeah. such a short time. <laughs> I wanna go back to school and sort of like focus on my work. Try and try and um, get my A levels so I can go to university. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. And um, they gave us like a plant to plant in the ground for like memory. Ah, really nice. We have Very a tree in Africa memory. dedicated to us. Yeah. <laughs> when we need to plant a Mugaza tree in England. Uh, <laughs> if only you could carry one. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. We'll send you pictures of it as it grows. <laughs> It was very hectic in the beginning, but now I feel very, very proud because they've achieved so much in just a week, and you can see how good they are. So now I know I have four kids, not only two. <laughs> yes. The time has come for the British teens to leave Kenya and return to their families back home. You've seen how my kids are really gonna miss you. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, it's been a hard battle and we fought and we won together. So please let's keep in touch. Very, very proud of you. I just want to see achievements in you. Thank you very much. You're a great family. Thank you. You've learned what you've learned here. You've seen what you've seen here. Please, don't let us down. Bye-bye, see you.
always going to remember this week in Kenya. Oh. Always. And although I've argued with Mrs. a lot, I've realised that everything she was doing in the week was for my own good and to help me. This made me realise like I can do things for myself and that I need to show a bit more respect at home. This experience is completely different to what I thought it would be. I expected a holiday and to just give some random Kenyan parents a bit of attitude and then go and enjoy myself. But I've widened my perspective on my entire life. I've seen things in myself I don't like and uh, I want to change them. So that's something for the future. I hope Billy comes back from Kenya with a different attitude to life, basically, and realises that you just don't get anywhere if you don't try. You know, you've got to help yourself. You've got to get on with it. Hopefully, going on this trip, she would have learnt something. You know? We'll see you though, won't we? <laughs> Look at the colour of you. Oh. Look at you. I come so well. I'm so happy to be home. Oh. Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, yes, please. How come you learned to make tea? I learned to do a lot in Africa. Here you go, Mum. There's your Thank tea. You. Thank you, my darling. I can't believe you made me a cup of tea. It's all right. Any time. <laughs> she went out the door as a child. She's come back as an adult. With some manners and everything. It's great. It's really made me realise out there that um, I've got to show you some more respect and be nice and <laughs> try and get on with my schoolwork more Good and girl. spend your, like, more time on my education and less on just going out partying and stuff. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to try. I'm really sorry, I'm on for the floor. Before Scott went away, I was worried about his behaviour. I hope this experience will change him to be a completely different person. Hello, sir. Oh, Hi, Ma. Oh. <laughs> Miss you. I've got some stiff cuts from school, Ma. Oh. <laughs> well done. I think it's only fair I apologise for being such a knob for the last few years and stop all my drinking and arguing and moaning and complaining and poncing money. I am going to stop that now and really just try hard at looking for a job and doing well with my life. I'm so pleased your attitude changed. Things are going to look better now for both of us. I feel so proud. I was lost him for like two years, but now I'm really pleased I have my son back.